Okay. Uh, so yeah, over to you, Emma. Um, it was a relatively minor point, but I think in defense of Magda, I don't know if she meant 1989 or 1798, because Ellen White actually doesn't say 79th, the, I don't think, is the time of the end. She says it's the end of the 1260, which is what Cedri said, and the captivity of the papacy, but she doesn't link it to down 11, and she doesn't call it the time of the end, I don't think. I was just trying to find a, a, a passage, because I thought she did, but I don't think she does, perhaps. So we do get that from our understanding of down 11. Okay. I think, I'll, but I'll, I'll double check that because I thought she said it somewhere, but I can't find yeah, it. I was lent that, but I remember this. I was discussing this with Rogeras when we went through baptism, baptismal vows. Right. And that's the way he taught me that, and it stuck in my mind. But of course, um, I'm open to if it, it, it can be there. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, you might be right. Yeah. So that's a bit of homework that we each can do. Um, is just to clarify um, that idea of 1798. But essentially, this is the structure that we have. 1798, 1844, Sunday law, close of probation, second advent. So we know that come 1863, um, we'll say 1844, um, then 1850, God tries to gather their people again. And um, Ellen White in this time period prior to that, she's also in a Laodicean condition and even more so after 1863. And she doesn't recognize time. She has countless statements to, you know, a strong condemnations against using time. And so she has no vision of, of what the future will look like time-wise. And so our movement comes comes along and we start, we recognize that we are living in a new generation. And in that new generation, we recognize that the Sunday law is coming, the close of probation is coming, the second advent is coming, but there's still this period of time in between 1844 and the Sunday law. Natalie, your hands up. Yeah, I'm not sure if you said this. Um... Ellen White doesn't recognise time even before 1850 because she should have been mm -hmm. using 25, 20 to predict, mm -hmm. not just after 63. Thanks. Sure. So she's she's blind to time, essentially. She, she doesn't recognise time as a component of prophecy. And so we have this big gap. Oh, I don't know what's going on with my screen. I'm sorry. Um, stopped you to attempted to start an invalid broadcast um let me try something i'll be back in i'll be back in one minute oh wait no i'll still be here i just need to log in with a different account on my zoom um if that's okay Uh, Emma, could you let my other device in? Thanks. Okay, hopefully it won't start cutting out now. So we have this big gap in between 1844 and the Sunday law. And we know that within the great controversy, there's stuff that's happening. There's 1888, we come up and we say 1989 is part B of the time of the end. And so we start creating this, this new reform line, so to speak. And so we, we start that at um, 1989. Whoops. We start that at 1989. And this being, well, we call it the big line or the line of the 144,000. We start that at 1989. We recognize that the Sunday law is a component of Bible prophecy. Um, we still have the waymarks of the close of probation and of the second advent. But now we've started filling in this space in between 18, 
1844 and the Sunday law. We, uh, whoops, we have 1989. And the second way mark, as we know, 2001. We start filling that in as well. And we start populating this, this gap, this period of space between 1844 and the Sunday law re in recognizing that there's still so much that's, that's occurring within the great controversy. And we take that a step further. So if I were to ask you, when we break down the line of the 144,000 and we go down into the lines of the priests, the Nethanim, the Levites, we call those fractals. So from your understanding, um, anyone, what is a fractal? What's the premise of a fractal? What's the idea of a fractal? Natalie? Um, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure of the question, but are you looking for dispensation? No, no, just uh, not with regards to lines, just when you hear the word fractal, what does that mean to you? Like, what's your understanding of a fractal? When you put something onto each other, or is that repeating a lot? So there's this idea of putting things um, onto each other. Um, put things onto each other. And you said um, there's also an idea of repeat and enlarge. Um, Leon, you got your hand up. Well, you kind of answered it really. But yeah, it's like if you look at like a, a flower. Mm-hmm. Um, well, a certain flower that has a pattern. Mm -hmm. If you look deep into that flower, you'll see this the same pattern, and it repeats mm -hmm. and repeats and repeats it's like a um um like a spiral. Nice, I like that. So there's this idea yeah. of a pattern, and so you have a big thing, and as you zoom in, you see that pattern getting repeated and repeated. So um, Ignatius has written in the chat, it's a smaller version of the big. So every time you go deeper, is that deeper thing independent of the big flower? All those small fractals, do they exist independent of the big flower? Yes or no? Cedri? Um, I don't think so. Okay, Natalie? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they just look different. So you, if you put 1989 and 2001 and something above it, it it's going to look different, but might mean the same thing because it's increase of knowledge formalization type thing. Yeah, so structurally, they, uh, they look the same um, in terms of that repeating pattern. But when you start inspecting them, you know, at a microscopic level, there'll be some contrast but there'll be a lot more comparisons when you zoom out at this and you look at the structure. Um, so you get to see a lot more detail as you zoom in. But as Cedri pointed out, as you fractalize and you go and look at each of those fractals, they do not exist independent of the bigger picture. So they can't exist on their own. So if I were to say, okay, I'm going to take this line, and it doesn't exist anymore. Can I say that Levites, Nethanims, priests exist? I can't because they can't exist independent of the bigger thing. If I were to take a flower and I look at all those smaller, smaller fractals, if I take away the flower, those fractals don't exist because they have no pattern to repeat. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, Natalie. What's one of those things when you're a kid and you look down it? And when it, you what, sorry? You know, when you're a child and you have one of those things and you mess around with it and you look down it with your eye and it has a pattern inside and it just expands. Can, begins with K. A, a kaleidoscope. That's the oh, one. That's yeah. It. yeah, that's a fractal. That's <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a nice way of looking at it. It's a kaleidoscope. And as soon as you take away the very first layer of that kaleidoscope, the deeper layers don't exist. I want us to really get that point because it's fundamental to what we're going to discuss. Uh, once you take away 
the big picture, the smaller fractals don't exist because all they are is just filling in details or gaps of this big picture. So yeah, we have the line of 144,000 and we say, okay, there's this time period, just like what we did between 1844 and the Sunday law, there was a big gap and it was missing details. So we created Waymarks 1989, 2001 to give more information, to see more detail about what's happening in that time period. We create this line of the 144,000. And now we're faced with the same problem. Between 2001 and the Sunday law, again, there's information in there that we are living through that we can see a lot is happening that's fundamental to the great controversy, but I can't see it. So we have to zoom in. And once we zoom in, we start getting, so we're going to say, okay, let's zoom in to what's happening here between the Sunday law and between 2001 and the Sunday law. And we say, okay, we have this line of the priests. Uh, and we start it, um, sorry, just opening up something here. And we start it at 1989, as we're all aware. And it also, second way mark is at 2001. But now we start getting a bit more information where we have 2014. We have, I'm gonna take this out just to give us a bit more space. That's okay. We have 2014 as our middle way mark. And then we have 2019. And then we have 2021. And so this being the line of the priest, we can say, okay, now we filled in a bit of information of what's happening between 2001 and the Sunday law. We have 2014, we have 2019, we have 2021. Three, on our line, major way marks, on the line of the 144,000, you can't really see them until you start looking deeper. And let's just fill in the rest of these lines. Um, so, um, Cedri, where once we go from the priests, we go on to the, um, we go on to the Levites, and where do we begin that that line of history? If you're there, Cedri. Um. Yeah, I'm here. Um. Say that again, please. So, like we did with the. 144,000 that we began the line at 1798. Um, we went on to the priests. We began that in 1989, not 1798 for the 144, 1989. Um, priests, 1989. Where do we begin the line of the Levites? Can um, you tell me what the waymarks are for, for that group of people? Sorry, I can't think right now i'm just scared to think just in case i get wrong that's okay you're allowed to get yeah. things wrong um it's got to be the line of the the did you say the line of the priests the levite levite mm -hmm. is it 2014 no no, try again. Uh, 2001. Exactly. 2001, yeah. Yeah. And then the next one? Is um, 2014. Mm -hmm. And the next one? 2019. And the next one? 2021. Exactly. Thank you for that, Cedri. So you see, you got it correct. No need Thank to Thank you for your encouragement. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so I'm just uh, redrawing these just to have a bit more space. Um, 
and have them look a bit nicer. So you said we begin this one. Um, ah, you missed one more, sorry. It's five. So you gave me up until 2021, but there's one more. Cedri? Uh, then it's got to be, is it the close of probation? No. No. Where does it line up with on, on, on the big line? Um. So we've done the close of probation. That would line up with 2021. And so now it's the last waymark. The second advent lines up with which big waymark? It's right there. Uh, oh, uh, sorry, I can, can hardly see this. Um, co sorry, oh, you want the, the dates? Yeah, well, what big way mark does it line up with? You said the Sunday law, mm -hmm. but uh, yeah, that's it. It is. Oh, yeah, I thought you wanted the dates. No, 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 oh, right. we don't have a date for the Sunday law. Yeah, no. question no. mark. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the line of the Netherlands. Um, and I'll just fill that in for time's sake. We begin that at um, 2001, with the time of the end being 2001, the equivalent of 2001 lining up with um, 2019. And then their Sunday law being in 2021, their close of probation at the Sunday law, and their second advent at, we'll say, Daniel 12th one. Natalie, yeah? yeah. Uh, why haven't you put the date on the time of the end for the Levites? Or are you um, just using the yeah, I'm just using the one above, so 2001. Um, I just wanted to say to C tree, always just move one, one forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Doing yeah. the priest Levites and the Nephilims. It's easy to remember then, isn't it? Just move one way, mark forward, and then you've got the answer. Exactly. Um, that's what helps me as well. So we have this, we have this repeating pattern. And remember, these are now we're fractalizing this big line. And all that we're doing is telling the story of three groups of people that exist within this big line. I'm not saying that there are 144,000. I'm just saying in the story of 1989 to the second advent, there's these group of people and these lines tell their stories and they are filling in gaps between 2001, Sunday law, close of probation, second advent. Uh, Natalie, you have your hand up. Yeah, you know, I have always noticed when I'm on, I'm on my phone at the moment, but when I'm on my computer or phone, there's always your, when you're doing this, there's always like a pen and a, you know, got, there's a thing that's always in the way of the line. Uh, Can that be moved? Can you move that somewhere? So it's the not. The black thing. Yeah, you're uh, not move it now. That's always in the way and I can't see what. I don't know how I can. Um, yeah, that's it. Fantastic. Uh, uh, it will always be somewhere. <laughs> so it will always be in the way somewhere. <laughs> uh, maybe I can. Let me try something. Um, I will just ah okay. Sorry, I'll I'll figure it. I'll think about how to how to resolve that. Um, uh, sorry about that. But at least for now, you can see um what's what's on what I want you to see at least. <laughs> um, but now I've lost all my other stuff. <laughs> okay, so we're filling in details, and so if we were to say. Um, Natalie gave us the loud cry that occurs between the Sunday law and the close of probation. Right? And we start saying, okay, this, this isn't a big way, Mark. It's not your 1989. It's not your 2001 Sunday law, close of probation, second advent. It's not part of your big five on your hand. It's, it's a smaller way, Mark, but it's also telling a story. And we get this idea, and when we start looking at 
different dispensations. When I say dispensations, I mean the periods of time between big way marks, we see this repeating pattern. And so where do we get this idea of a repeating pattern? Um, yeah, where do we get this idea of a repeating pattern? Natalie? It's funny when you ask questions because I'm really not sure where you're coming from. Um, but I would say repeat and pattern a couple of things. You get you see it in Bible verses, you see it from methodology of Miller. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So the easiest place, as you said, is Millerite history, where you have um there's two, there's two fundamental, fundamental places. It's this idea of first a message is unsealed and then we get an increase of knowledge about that message um, and then that message is formalized and then um, you're tested on it or at least so we say you hand in your papers because it's this period from the formalization up until this final period that you'd say is your testing time. Um, but that marks the end of a test, this final one. And then the other repeating pattern is um, taken out of Millerite history, where you have, um, it's taken from Samuel Snow's work when he arrived at the camp meeting to give the loud cry or the midnight cry. And he first gives that at which camp meeting, Magda? Do you remember? Or you can give me any one of them. Boston, mm -hmm. Concord, etc. But I'm yep. not sure in which one he's giving that. Probably yep. at Boston. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. No, yes. no you're correct. Um, that there's this box of Boston, Concord, etc. So we take this idea of how a message develops. So Samuel Snow first presents at Boston. His, his idea of when um, he expects the 2300 days to end. And he first presents at a camp meeting in Boston. And then he builds upon that um, at a camp meeting in Concord. And it's at Exeter where at least Millerite history and we recognize that was the midnight cry for them because it's at that point where all that he's been teaching comes together and he stands up in full force and says this is it you know October 22 1844 um, I don't think he had that precise date at earlier camp meeting someone can correct me if I'm wrong but it's finally at Exeter where he proclaims uh, that the 2300 days are ending and so that's that's this idea of the message finally being formalized. And we see this again um, at the beginning of Millerite history when William Miller first starts reading about the 2520, starts understanding the prophecies of Daniel. He gets his teaching credentials. He's authorized. And we go through that process of unsealing. He has an increase of knowledge. And then it's formalized with with him getting his preaching credentials, um, Natalie. What's the uh, 10 <laughs> days for with Snow? Was it was the 10 days to do with him getting the final date? Or, what, wait, uh, please repeat that. The, the 10, there's something about 10 days before. I can't remember. I, I can't remember, sorry. Can uh, remember, Suzanne? Does Emma? anyone have? Um... No, but I think that's Josiah Litt, 10 days before August 11th on August yeah. 1st. That's the... He okay, keeps that date or eleventh. I thought I'm trying to find it because it's not easy to find information about Boston. But I think he already had the date from Boston, Concord, and Exeter. But I'm not sure. Um, I I think it, he did as well. I absolutely hundred percent think he did. Good it's point. Exeter where it, it seems to swell into this loud cry, and I, I don't know quite why. Whether there's more because there were lots of people at Boston. <laughs> But I, I recall that in his studies, um, in Samuel Snow's studies, at some point. He mm. only had it at it's happening in the spring of 1844. He didn't necessarily have the dates. So that development, I'm not I'm not quite sure when he got the final date. You may be right. Um, I trust your judgment. 
Um, and then he was on Day of Atonement. Mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, I have to try to find the evidence. I have to find the evidence somewhere. Going back yeah. a long way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's reminding us of past studies. Um, but yeah, we get this idea of within a dispensation, a message is developing until God's people can be tested on that message. And it's essentially this thing that, you know, God can't hold you accountable to something until they've revealed it to you in its fullest sense for what needs to be accomplished in that dispensation. So God gives you time to learn about a message and you get to develop it. In, into it and understand the implications of it in its fullest form at the formalization. And so when we look at 18, um, 1989 to 2001, we see the same phenomena happening um, with the increase of knowledge in the formalization. And um, Debbie, if you're there, <laughs> what dates do we give to give to the increase of knowledge and formalization between 1989 and 2001. Is it 1996? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we have 1996 and then um, the increase of knowledge. Uh, Susan? Um, or uh, let's see, Emma. Nineteen ninety one. So two, yeah, two, I think we had two years, but anyway. Yeah, ninety one and ninety six. So I'm gonna come back to you, Debbie. But for now, I'll stick on Emma. In nineteen ninety one, we say that was an increase of knowledge, and what do we attach to that increase of knowledge? So we recognize in nineteen eighty nine, a message was unsealed. We'll say for Elder Jeff, and you know he begins studying and. He has an increase of knowledge. And what was that increase of knowledge? Reform lines. Mm -hmm. So it's this understanding that um, in each generation, God is reforming a group of people. And in in his pamphlet or book, you know, he goes through different histories of reform. Um, more than what we look at as the four, he goes through Noah's reform line, goes through you know, Elijah's reform line goes through the reform line of John the Baptist. We've distilled it into four, but he sees this idea of history repeating through reform lines. And that leads him to 1996. And what, Debbie, to you, will say the message is formalized in what? In what format? In what book? In what? what's the concept that's being formalized? Is it Daniel 11, 40 to 45? Yeah, so there's that. Um, then 11, 40 to 45. Um, mm -hmm. Understanding that we're living in that history now. So mm -hmm. by using reform lines, we can see that we're living in the last six verses of Daniel 11. And he publishes this, this, this thought, this work in the Time of the End magazine. And a central component of that Time of the End magazine is this idea of what? So in addition to Daniel 11, 42 to 45, there's a fundamental thing that's happening there in 96. Um, yeah, uh, Emma, I just see because you've unmuted. I'm oh, sorry, I kept it unmuted. I think, um, it's, it, do you want to hear the answer? Yeah, yeah. Time, the Time of the End magazine, and that is connected to the reform lines because he based it on repeating Millerite history so that Millerite history he knew was 1798 to 1844, but he saw that from that parable of the Ten Virgins that Ellen White talks about it, the experience of the Millerites being repeated for us at the end. Mm -hmm. And that's so then he saw that three angels' messages would be repeated, and after that came reform lines, I think. I don't know which way around actually, but that's all connected in my head. Mm -hmm. And then, um, wrote this Time of the End magazine to show that we are now in the Time of the End again from 1989. Yeah. So there's this connection between the increase of knowledge and the formalization where one is a building block to the other. They can't be separated. Um, and it's at this point where you're now going to be tested um, at 1996. But there's still a piece of information which is not what we were being tested about, but it's... Um, or at least it's not what's formalized specifically. 
Um, to give you a bit of a hint, think about what's formalized externally in the United States. What are big things that are happening in 1996 in the United States? <laughs> Um, with the news, uh, news um, corporations. Fox, is it on about Fox News being formed? Mm -hmm. So you have Fox. I th I don't know which way around this is, but there's two two things that are happening between two news corporations, Fox and the other one being Natalie. Uh, was it CNN? Mm -hmm. So I don't know which way around this is. Someone can either Google that quickly, but one comes into existence and the other, you know, goes online for the first time. Um, they were a newspaper um, or a radio channel and they become an online publication for the first time. So these two streams of information get formalized externally and internally in the Time of the End magazine, as much as Jeff is talking about the fact that we are in the last six verses using reform lines, he points out that these, these two streams of information, the Uli and the Hidekal, the two rivers in Genesis, and one leads you to life and one leads you to death. And if you drink from one or the other, you'll go to life or you'll go into the lake of fire. And so it's it's this that's formalized, this idea of two streams of information that's that's really put in in the public record and externally it's formalized um, there. Uh, Natalie. Yeah, correct me if I'm wrong, but Elder Jeff at that time knew nothing about those yeah. two streams of information uh, that was put in there by Elder Tex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, so... Also... Afghanistan, 1996, the overthrow. Uh, so what's happening with Afghanistan? I think 1996, Kabul was a, a, a coup, wasn't there? Or something like that. Or oh, what was it, ca ca Caliphate? Because I think that's what led the elders in uh, London to come up with the 2001, really. Um, I'm going to put an asterisk onto that because I'd love for you to give us a bit more information about that next week. So I'm going to hold you to that. So the first five minutes or 10 minutes next week, Natalie, please could you just run us through what's happening? Because this will come important into the main point that I want to make. Um, but yeah, please could you just come with just a five minute talk on what's happening at 1989 or let's say the 10 years prior to 1989 and then 91, 96, 2001, what's happening with Afghanistan at those waymarks? Um, as much information that you can squeeze into five, seven why are you minutes. Ask, why are you asking me to do that? Because you brought it up. <laughs> um, I'll think about it. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So, so 1991, 96, we have an increase of knowledge through reform lines and we have this formalization of two streams of information within Daniel 11, 40 to 45. They don't exist independent of each other. And we see this repeating all the way throughout these dispensations. So between the Sunday law and the close of probation, we say that the same thing exists. We have the loud cry. And um, I don't think we attach a name to the second one other than formalization. Um, between the close of probation and the second advent, we have um, two way marks again. Um, yeah, Natalie, while I fold these in. Sorry, I was I was thinking you were put you were you were past the close of probation and you were saying we didn't have a a name for it and I thought yes we do so yeah sorry carry on. Yeah, and so we have the death decree being given, and this idea of the day and the hour being announced of. Christ's second advent. And so with this repeating pattern, we can see that there are in fact two way marks in between on the line of the 144,000, two way marks in between um, 2001 and the Sunday law, namely 2019 and 2021. 
add this one is what we would call raffia and this one being tanium. So just like what we did, um, there's two lines that I want to focus on uh, for the next few minutes, the line of the priests and the line of the um, 144,000. Um, we could go through each and every one of these dispensations and identify what the increase of knowledge was, what the formalization was, but um, I'll go through specific ones that I want to want to point out. So in the line of the priest from 2014, um, okay, we'll say 2019. <laughs> what would we say is the increase of knowledge? What date do we associate with the increase of knowledge? Um, between 2019 and 2021. Someone else. <laughs> I'll come back to you, Natalie, but uh, I want to get uh, Cedri involved. Is that um, gender or equality? No, date. Oh. Let's, I want a date, date first. Is that uh, the middle of the year? What year? <laughs> 2019. Um, no, try again. Um, so it is not 2000, middle of 2019. It's, it, you said the, sorry, the question was what again? What? Um, the this way mark this this increase of knowledge on the line oh. of the priests um we have a date for that maybe what will help is if you think about what um external event we associate with that way mark um, um we we built it from the line of revolutions You can pass it on to someone. You can pick someone yeah. else to try and answer for you. Okay. Uh, who hasn't had a chance is Leon. <laughs> mm -hmm. 2020. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Debbie. Uh, there's a date specifically. So externally. So it is 2020, but there's a day and a month that we give to that. Leon? You're asking for the day and a month mm -hmm. in 2029. I mean, 2019. <laughs> In twenty twenty. Oh, sorry. No, I don't know. Insurrection. Oh, 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 um. Oh, was it somewhere? Somewhere in March, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Or April. Um. Uh, close. <laughs> um. I'll give. I know. But I'll, I'll give. I'll give Natalie. She's been itching. I'm oh, probably wrong. I'm just. Oh, I, that's I, fine. I, I, need, I need to guess as well. I. You think I know things but i don't sometimes you know is it is, is it march the 25th or is it is it may it's the second you, it's you, you gave it in 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 like mixed so it's 25 may <laughs> <laughs> is that with george floyd then yeah Surely. exactly uh, i was gonna i was gonna say to see a, a close shot around the world and i thought you'll mm -hmm. know exactly what that would be oh that would be near a lot better <laughs> 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 um so so yeah it's it's externally it's this element of george floyd um and as you said the shot heard around the world but at the same time internally alda tess is doing studies um and she does a study on what topic um i'm gonna go with magda <laughs> Hmm, I know formalization, but mm. uh, will that be mm, LGBTQ? Mm, nope, it's close uh, because that's related to another waymark. 
but it's something something else. Feminism? Mm -mm. You can pass to someone else. You can pick on someone yes. else. Try and answer. So I'm going. Yeah, let's. Who is here? Let me check. Okay, let's go for Susan. Susan, uh, do you want to accept the mic and give us the answer? If you're there, you can type in the chat as well if you aren't able to speak. Mm, I'm not sure Susan is there. So, what was the question again? Sorry, um, um, it was externally this way mark of 25 May 2020. We associated with um, the counter revolution or the revolution with George Floyd, and so, um, that's externally. Internally, there's a message that Alda Tess gives or a study, a specific study that she's given, um, at that way mark that we say is the increase of knowledge. Oh, um, I think oh. is that equality? Um, no, it's not. It raises them. Is nope. it Apis Ball? It's Apis Ball. Oh, if you remember, she did studies. Um, this was during COVID now. Um, and she did studies uh, with the ministry in Australia about Apis Ball, about how, uh, what happens when we as a culture, as a society, what we've ended up creating God in our image, in the image that we see through our cultural eyes, our sexist eyes, um, in the worship of of masculinity. Um, and so from that, as we said with 91 and 96, they are connected. We go on to the formalization. And I again will ask what date do we associate with the formalization? And what is the external event and what's the internal message? So, Magda. Okay, I think I know this one. So, the date is to, uh, 15th of August 2021. Yep. Not 2021. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I think so. Yeah, you're right. Nah, you're confusing me. No, no, you are right. <laughs> So this small way mark day... is 15 August 2021 and carry on. Mm -hmm. At this time, there was um, the thing with um, Afghanistan, exactly this date as well. What, uh, what they were taking, um They were taking over... Uh, Taliban, yeah. Taliban. Yeah, so the Taliban did what on that date? Um, they take over Afghanistan. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, how to essentially. I think it was the day that they um, storm into Kabul, uh, as I think Natalie said earlier, and they raise their flag, you know, in symbol of they are the new government. So there's this mm -hmm. terrorist organization who do something. Um, so there's something related to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. Can I ask you why you haven't put same sex marriage on the increase of knowledge in 20? Yeah. So I'm going to ask what date do we have for those studies of same-sex marriage now you're asking um, are you talking about the, are you talking about with Alta Tess or Alta Paminda with uh, Alta Tess as she gave the formalization of the message um yeah okay with you on you on about um You're on about LGBTQ, putting LGBTQ on the way mark there. Because I was thinking of celibacy and same-sex marriage with Elder Paminda, but you're no. thinking about, um, you know, this is on celibacy. Showed um, us that we have same-sex marriage with, um, within LGBTQ. I didn't see Elder, Pamin Elder Tess give that. Yeah, so Elder Tess did studies on um, looking at the history 
of the Bible with relation to homosexuality, if you remember, and why in different cultures, the Roman culture and pedestry yeah. and all that, if you remember, that whole study um, started with the line of LGBTQ rights from 1989. So yeah. all that was prompted I by Elder Tessa's studies. Yeah, but that was just saying that we accept homosexuality or in our movement, it wasn't anything to do with same-sex marriage that came from Elder Minda. Well, we can debate that at another, but we, we can we can conclude that it was LGBTQ rights that was formalized um, at the sway mark. Um, can we agree on that? Yeah, yeah you can put yeah yeah, yeah Elder Pabenda and uh, who Elder whoever Chester. whoever it was, we can just say LGBTQ yeah, rights. Yeah. Okay. Same sex marriage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. LGBTQ marriage. Do you think we have to put LGBTQ? Is it one A or I A? Sorry. Um, I I I don't know. Um, A yes. plus. A plus. Yeah, I A plus. Okay. I'll just put the plus. <laughs> um, because we're going to leave intersexual or inter. Yeah. We so leave... I put the plus to include the spectrum. Thank you. Okay, so now tell me how, like, with three form lines. Emma explained how that related to Daniel 11, 40 to 45 and two streams of information. How does APIS ball, how does the increase of knowledge relate to the formalization in this dispensation? Just a short story of how the two are related, how you can think you would sell it as them being related. We'll get to that, Magda. Mm, anyone? Yeah, um, uh, Natalie. Uh, wild well, guess. Um, we've because we've got Floyd and Apis Bull. Just so... think, Apis Bull. Leave, leave George Floyd, um, to the side for now. So, how does the Apis Bull relate to, um, marriage? LGBTQ. I would say um, hmm, that's a hard question, but I would say it's the uh, ideology of how they see things and how we see things. But mm -hmm. that's not the answer you want. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's part of the answer. Uh, Magda? Yeah, I would say um, how they do view strength, masculinity, and that stuff. Um, and so that's why, for example, in the, uh, pedestal and that stuff in the Greek, they didn't want to be men with men because they would be one submissive. So the way they view, um, the couples, uh, and masculinity, the way they worship masculinity and the way they view women, uh, I think it's all connected uh, to LGBTQ as well. Exactly. And that's a fundamental point is that you can only understand uh, LGBTQ rights, at least marriage within the context of culture and religion, by understanding how gender roles have played out throughout the ages. And when you look at Apis Bull, as Magda said, and you see that as the worship of masculinity and all these stereotypical masculine straight traits, and you as Israelites worshiping this Apis Bull, or as us as a culture worshiping masculinity, we see the male as dominant, so we will worship it. The same is why in history, in societies, and today, homosexuality would we would say is looked down upon because you can't have two dominant beings together there has to be a dominant and a submissive so LGBT or gay marriage just can't work because a man and a man two dominants can't be together a woman and a woman two submissives can't be together so that's how apis ball and or at least that's how i see it that's how natalie has described it or mag does described it um how they connect. Um, Emma? 
yeah, I was just going to summarise it by saying patriarchy and headship, but <laughs> I, I agree with everything everyone said. But is could we just say it's linked through the fa- through patriarchy that that yeah. that oh, reinforcement exactly. of the, like gender roles, like you said, reinforcement of gender Slight aside question. I don't want to divert you, but is if it is just park it. Um, someone said the other day I was talking to about the apis bull qualities that God has. Would we still say that God has those qualities? I believe so. Uh, yeah. I I think the point yeah. of the apis bull study or the apis bull in essence is when you list out all the characteristics of specifically the apis bull, you know, it's your stereotypical masculine qualities. And mm. the problem with trying, Ellen White says this, of why um, things in nature are an imperfect parable of God is because they're so limited. So they don't tell a full picture of who God is. So if you were to just describe God as these traits, it's it's incomplete, doesn't do God justice of the full picture that God is. But if we were to say, um, you know, hypothetically speaking, the apis bull is strong, but the apis bull is also caring. Um, that wouldn't be a problem. The problem comes when you start forming an incomplete picture of who God is and you paint God as just this version of what we've attached to male being um, and vice versa, what we've attached as the contrast to what female is. I think that's, I agree, but I think the the problem the person had was that we've robbed God of that strength and that power and that, in a sense of, they didn't say it this way, but that's what I was getting, that that God isn't powerful anymore, can't answer our prayers like they could before, or isn't in control of the world, isn't the same, hasn't got the same power, perhaps, as we saw in conservatism before. Sure. And I think that was worrying them. So <laughs> I think uh, it's, it's, it's something that's, I find has has happened consistently in the movement um, is that when because when a message arrives and we'll say Alda Tess or Alda Paminda or whoever is trying to make a specific point, they go hard on a specific point because they want that to sink in. But I think what's important for us is to while that point is being made, not forget that that doesn't negate everything else. So when we overemphasize or we consistently emphasize a specific thing, it's easy for us to forget the other things. So like 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 you're saying, um, we've we've constantly you know been been talking about how um, strength and and strength and power and domination and um, all these things are in inverted commas bad, but that's to make a specific point. So in our minds, we get to the point of saying, okay, so then does that mean God is not them? But in reality, it's just being able to see those statements in the context in which they're being made as related to very specific points. And I can I can point to other examples of where this has happened. Um, yeah. Yeah. And of course, we'd all recognize that when a good person has got power and strength and is in power, it, it's, it's, it's beneficial. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um, Natalie? Um, uh, just one quick question to Emma. What did you mean that God can't answer our prayers? Thanks. Oh, in the yeah. sense that before, God was all powerful, all knowing, all omnipresent, you know, that whole powerful picture of God. And the person seems to be struggling with the fact that we've kind of smashed that powerful pitch because Apis Bull is powerful and strong and fertile and the, all those things. And they were saying, is God not like that? And I think that I think that's what I was saying, that it, I think it smashed some people's faith and then saying, you know, that God hasn't got the whole world in their hands and perhaps is not as powerful as we thought before that could work these miracles and sort everything out. I think we had kind of a rosy, I shouldn't say we, I think a lot of people perhaps or some people People have that view of a conservative God having everything under control and they would always answer prayers. I mean, the problem with that picture is when it doesn't happen how we think, we get our faith gets a bit dashed. So I think that was the the point that you know, can God really answer our prayers like before? Where we did we have false expectation? But I think as Curtis mentioned, it is that balance, it's coming back to the middle and saying, no, yes, God has all that, 
but let's not focus on that. Equally, Elder Tess didn't want to say, let's make God a woman now, because knowing that that would box God in a woman characteristics and do away with the male and not be balanced again. Um, so, yeah, I think it's important to balance and, and not to throw out what you've seen before, as you say. And um, yeah, so just moving from that, um, we recognize that within this time period uh, of 2019 to 2021, it's telling a story, if we remember, of a message being unsealed. And then we learn about that message in 2020. Um, with regards to the studies of Apis Bull, we get a glimpse of what this message is, and then it's formalized and packaged, and we start being, as priests, remember, this is on the line of the priests, as priests, we start being tested um, about gay marriage, essentially, because now it's formalized, and we can stop being tested about it. Now, keep everything that we've said in your mind when we start answering the question of what's happening on the line of the 144,000 now. So Natalie, Magda wrote something in the chat. So she brought up radical feminism. So now let's go on to the line of the 144,000 because that's where we get to see this idea of radical feminism. Two things are happening to us same, simultaneously. We are being challenged, tested, or grown as priests and as 144,000 at the same time. So a message is unsealed. Uh, before I go on to that, I'll uh, recognize your hand, Natalie. Can you move that uh, doodah out of the way like you did last time, please? Yeah, thank yeah. you. Unsealed. Mm -hmm. Thanks. So your message is unsealed in 2001. We would say this is your increase of knowledge at Raffia and it's formalized at Panion. And so what would we say is the increase of knowledge in 2019? I'll go to you, Magda, because you brought it up. Sorry, can you repeat the question? The increase of knowledge in 2019 on the line of the 144,000 is what? So what did Elder Tess start teaching about in mid-2019? Do you mean Apis Bull again? Nope, because that's on the line of the priests. We're on the line of the 144,000 now. Oh, equality. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Specifically, feminism. And then the formalization is That's radical feminist mm -hmm. feminism. So in 2021, there's two things happening. In early 2021, on the line of the priests, as a small way mark on the line of the priests, we have gay marriage, um, August 15, and then on the line of the 144,000 on Panium this formalization, we have radical feminism. So both, for, there's two formalizations happening in 2021. Um, radical feminism and L, the, the study of gay marriage. So, um, before I go on, I'll go to you, Natalie, yeah? Are you gonna put a date on the radical feminism? Um, I can't remember it, so. <laughs> I'm not, but if you have it, then I can put it. I think it was October. December. I thought it was December, it might be October, Emma. There was something, yeah. I think, no, I think it's October. October, yeah. I think it is October as well because that's what well, October the 4th was it? Oh, to, October the 21st, it was, I think. But what was um, what was December? That's weird. So it was 21st of October, and then what was December? Weird. I'm not sure. My birthday. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put that on the line, Cedri. Your line. We'll, we'll draw one out for you. <laughs> um, 
So, sorry. So in this line of the 144,000, this big picture, we've started filling it in with details that we couldn't see before. And now I'm going to do something. I'm going to break some rules, if you'll let me. Um, but I want you to be cautious, because uh, I'm being cautious as well. Uh, before I get to you, Natalie, I just, uh, okay, wait, is it a question related to what I said, or is it um, something different? Sorry, I just had to say the December was the start of the King of the South, King of the North, the, the, the war, sorry, the Ukraine. That's what the okay. December was. Thank okay, you. no problem. So here on the line of the priests from 2001 to 2014, we have waymarks there that are increase of knowledge and formalization. Um, I it's 2009 and 2012. And this is related to um, the 126, Alta Palminda studies um, related to the 126 and um, 2009 was related to the 2520, okay? And then again, in 2014 to 2019, we have an increase of knowledge and a formalization um, where all the tests presents Acts 27 in 2016 and 2018. Um, she does those studies in Arkansas about two streams of information, about, um, you know, Pyrus and et cetera, et cetera. Um, and equality, uh, that, no, sorry. Yeah, it, but essentially we have these waypoints. Now, what did we say at the beginning? We said that in between 1844 and the Sunday law, we don't see much information, but there's things that are happening. And so we have 1989 and we have 2001 that we get from our lines as big way marks. What about all these small way marks? Do we see them? on this line of the 144,000. Structurally, we don't. But if we're looking at a continuous piece of history, like we were from 1798, telling the story of 1798 to the second advent in a line of progression, they're there. Because all these waymarks are telling us is a continual story of the great controversy. So this is the naughty bit of of work that I'm going to do is in between two big way marks we can only have an increase of knowledge and a formalization because that's the repeating pattern a message unsealed an increase of knowledge formalization test Austin Concord Exeter it's the same pattern but in a line of progression we see a story unfolding so if I were to take 2009 and 2012, and I were to take 2016 and 2018, and 2020, and 2021, in a line of progression, it's telling a story. It's just filling in information. That's all that these waymarks do. They fill in information of this big story, a big picture of the great controversy. Does that make sense? Does anyone disagree, agree, disagree or not? Okay, so yeah. if, if that's the case, and this was the point that we were making in previous, uh, in that previous study that I spoke about that we did last year, in the line of the Levites and the line of the Nethanims, um, we have these way marks between Panium and the Sunday law. And since all that these are, are fractals, they are, these two lines, Levites and Nethanims, are fractals of your big line, your 144,000, they cannot exist independent of that big line. So we have to be able to see the events that are happening here in between here as waymarks. Um, 
And so the question arises, what waymarks are they? What waymarks are they externally? And what waymarks are they internally? And last week I asked the question, so this has been an ongoing theme that I've been trying to build on, is how do we identify what makes something prophetic? What um, makes something into a waymark? What are the characteristics of a waymark? Because that would help us identify this piece of information between Panium and the Sunday Law to help us navigate where we are, what we're seeing in the world, um, what we expect to see in the world before the Sunday Law, and essentially how we would be able to identify these waymarks. Because as we're aware, um, as teachers, we've been given the tools to be able to do this. So we should be able to do this. If we use methodology, if we use the structures that we've been given, and terrible rules, if we want to say. Um, I'm not going to give an answer as to, and I don't want anyone to try and answer what those question marks are, but does that make sense for now? Um, I don't know if that's a question or a statement, Natalie. Um, your question, can you just say it one more time, please, and then I've got a comment about it. I don't know what my question was. <laughs> <laughs> I think you, I thought what I was hearing, because, you know, we all hear different things from the person who's saying the one thing. What I was hearing that from 2021 to the Sunday Law, those two waymarks in between, that we should, because of the repeating patterns or whatever, we should be able to know what kind of they're about. And you were saying, I don't want anyone to answer that question, because she said we were, we're all given the, I can't remember what you were, it, gifts or I don't know what you're saying, to study or whatever. Is that something am I paraphrasing you properly? Um so one correction is that these waymarks that I've I I have um, written out in yellow don't come from the repeating pattern. They come from filling in information from the fractals that you can't see because they're hidden. They're hidden yeah. in these stories of fractals in the lines of the priests, Levites, and ethnims. They're too small, so to speak, to be able to be seen on the 144,000 line. But they're and there they if you look close enough. And they look different. Yeah, sure. And um, I want, want to say one other thing, that if you look past with all the other markings you've put in yellow, you said that we members, um, I can't remember how you said it, sorry if I paraphrase that, we have the talent or we have the Holy Spirit, of course, as well, blah, blah, blah. But if we look back at all these, it was actually the angels that gave those two way marks. I don't see it changing. Sure, um, that can be the case. Uh, but I guess my point is um, that there are way marks there between 2021 and the Sunday law. And it's just, um, I said that uh, instead of us trying to identify what they are now within the study, um, through just guesses or whatever, um, is just an acknowledgement that they are there, and um, yeah, let's let's leave it up there for now. Um, being next week, we can continue our study. Yeah, let's let's close with a word of prayer first, um, and then we can chat a bit. But uh, Emma, would you mind? praying for us okay no let's let's pray um dear loving god we thank you for the way that you have brought each one of us through this week with health issues but also we thank you for bringing us as a movement along this line of progression we see the increase of knowledge at every step for the 144,000, and all these way marks that we have accumulated over time showing us um your guiding hand we pray that you would give us uh, understanding and wisdom for our time what the way marks are now what we need to see where we're standing in earth's history as we see things in the world getting worse and the, re the republicans and what they're saying in america and where the whole world is seems to be groaning under this weight of sin we pray that you would give us courage in the face of opposition and we ask that you would help us to be a blessing to those around us to truly love our neighbor and love the minority, love the people that nobody loves. We pray that you would help us to be there for people and especially help us to keep this Sabbath holy 
may you bless the camp meeting that's about to start soon and may you give all the speakers wisdom from above and a message from you that we need to hear we thank you for the privilege of being able to join people worldwide through this zoom and we pray that you would continue to guide and direct us as a movement we thank you now we ask that you would give each of us rest and peace on this sabbath day in jesus name amen amen amen